they led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and scribes assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat with the officers and warmed himself by the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many bore false witness against Jesus, but their testimonies were inconsistent. Then some men stood up and testified falsely against him, saying, We heard this man say he will destroy the man-made temple, and in three days he will build another that is made without hands. But even their testimony was inconsistent. So the high priest stood up before them, and he questioned Jesus directly. He said, Have you no answer? to what these men are testifying against you? But Jesus remained silent and he made no reply. Again, the high priest questioned him, Are you the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and declared, Why do we need any more witnesses? You've heard the blasphemy from his mouth. What is your verdict? And they all condemned him as deserving death. Then some of them began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him with their fists and said to him, Prophesy, who was it that hit you? And the officers received him, and they continued beating him and slapping him in the face. While Peter was in the courtyard below, one of the servant girls of the high priest came down and saw him warming himself by the fire. She looked at Peter and said, Wait, you also were with Jesus the Nazarene. But Peter denied it. He said, I do not know or even understand what you're talking about. Then he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. There the servant girl saw him again and said to those standing nearby, This man is one of them, one of his followers. But Peter denied it again. A little while later, those standing nearby said once more to Peter, Surely you are one of his followers, for you too are a Galilean. Peter began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. Leave me alone. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will have denied me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. Early in the morning, the chief priests, elders, scribes, and the whole San Hedrin devised a plan. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate questioned him, So, are you the king of the Jews? Well, you have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests began to accuse him of many things. So Pilate questioned him again, Have you no answer? Look how many charges they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. Now, it was Pilate's custom at the feast to release to the people a prisoner of their choosing. And a man named Barabbas was imprisoned with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd went up and began asking Pilate to keep his custom. Well, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews then? Pilate asked. For he knew it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd, getting him to release Barabbas to them instead of Jesus. So Pilate asked them again, What then do you want me to do with the one that you call the king of the Jews? And they all shouted back, Crucify him! Why? asked Pilate. What evil has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! And wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. 
The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole company together. They dressed him in a purple robe. They twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they kept striking his head with a staff and spitting on him. And they knelt down and bowed before him. And after they had mocked him for a while, they removed the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. And they led him out to crucify him. Now Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And there they nailed him to a cross. They divided his garments by casting lots to decide what each of them would take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the charge inscribed against him read, The King of the Jews. Along with Jesus, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by heaped abuse on him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you, the one who was going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, look at you now, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and scribes mocked him, saying, huh, He saved others, but he can't save himself. Come on, let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. And even those who were crucified with him berated him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came all over the land. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Elohi, Elohi, lima sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of those standing nearby heard this, they thought he was calling out for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and held it up for Jesus to drink. Someone said, leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah comes to help him and take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and breathed his last. Too. 